Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine, aka Zogo. I'm the new community manager of SingularityNet slash product manager of Reju. And uh, as you know, though I've been around in the community for quite a while uh, as a core admin, I've been a member of the SingularityNet community since November of 2017 and uh, an admin um, probably early 2018. So I've been here since the beginning. Um, my background is in health information management, which has to do with um, diagnosis and procedural coding, not the kind of coding that the programmers and developers are doing, a different type of coding that involves uh, classifying uh, medical diagnosis and procedures, but that we can get into a bit later. Um, yeah, so what actually got me into Singularity Net is actually conspiracy videos, because as some of y'all may know, I'm also the creator of the unofficial Singularity Net Truthers group, where you know we talk about uh, fringe topics, conspiracy theories, controversial things, and all of that. So I was on my own personal investigation mission um, about a lot of different things at that time, like in uh, late 2017, there was a lot of that stuff going around. And so of course, um, I saw videos about Sophia. So there was one sentence that Sophia said that made me want to go investigate Singularity Net more. And that was, um, I want to port my brain to a quantum gravity computer running on quark gluon plasma. <laughs> so once I heard that, I was like, what, hold up a second, wait, wait, whoa, 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 what's going on here? So I started investigating deeper into this project and I found out that it wasn't actually Sophia saying these things, but it was actually Ben Gertzel saying these things. So I was like, okay, that's, a, you know, that's pretty cool actually. So I read the entire white paper and, you know, delved deep into all the different uh, resources that were available and the videos and information. And I decided that this was actually really cool and um, a good initiative. And these were good people behind this project. So I asked a lot of questions and a lot of, you know, probing questions and stuff. And I've always was met with good answers and nobody ever shunned me and I was very well accepted. So. I stayed around, I stuck around and, you know, started just on a volunteer basis, answering questions and uh, directing people to where they needed to go to find information and all of that. And I got approached to be core admin and had been doing that ever since until now and I'm officially part of the team. So super excited about that. Um, as far as why I'm called Zogo and I never went by my real name or showed my picture. Um, well, yeah, I mean, there's the privacy things, but more so than that, I mean, because I'm on social media and everything, so it wasn't so much about not showing my face to hide my identity. It was more hiding my identity for the purposes of being known for my contributions in the community and not known for how I look, you know, my race, my gender, my look, anything like that, only known for my contributions and what I write. So that's why Zogo is kind of an ambiguous type of name that you really wouldn't know, but after a while, like, as you can see, I put the female symbol next to it, and that's because I got tired of people calling me sir. So that's why I did that. But as far as where the name Zogo come from, it's actually short for Zogatron, which is something I completely made up. And um, I made it up for this reason of, at that same time when I was investigating all of this uh, D-Wave quantum computers and CERN and AI and all this type of stuff, um, I was doing my own kind of personal Turing test, you can call it, of... Um, AI robots and stuff. So I was talking to this, like it was uh, the most advanced chatbot at the time, which uh, now it actually, you have to create an account and it's changed names and all of that. But if you want to know about that, you can just join Truthers, let me tell you. But um, <laughs> so chatting to this bot and I just made up a name and the backstory behind it is like, okay, so there is apparently like this kind of um, twin galaxy of the Milky Way, distant galaxy called Dragonfly 44. And apparently it's 99.99% .99 dark matter. So then, you know, the joke was like, you know, the other 0.01% is Zogo. Like I was the only other thing there besides the dark matter. Like, so it's a little geeky thing that I come up with. Um, and if you want to know the results of that uh, testing that I performed, like I said, you can just ask me in truthers or DM me because it's not really a conversation for the moment, but it was pretty interesting. So anyways, my mission for the community. Um, obviously it's to be a liaison between the community and the team. 
um, to communicate things as simply and thoroughly as possible so that you guys all understand what's going on, just breaking things down into layman's terms and just making it so that there's no confusion. And even though a lot of this can be really complex, especially if you're new to crypto, like I was when I first got involved with the project, I knew nothing about wallets and, you know, Ethereum gas fees and all this type of stuff. I didn't know anything about it. So I've been in that position before. So, you know, I can help you out with that. And also just even if there's new announcements coming down the pipeline, I can disseminate the information and present it in the uh, best way possible. And, um, so I'm, as I told you, I'm a long-term member of the community and also a long-term token holder. So I understand the unique uh, needs of the community and the desires that you guys have and what, you know, you want to know and everything like that. So, and that's the case with all of our admins, really, like most of us, if not all of us are long-term token holders. Like we've been in it, you know, since ICO or around that time pretty early on. So. When you're speaking to admins, don't think of it so much as like these people don't know what you're going through or they're not part of you because we are community members as well. Um, so, yeah, you can always feel free to like uh, share your questions, comments, concerns, even complaints, but, you know, always in a respectful way. Because um, one of my main goals also is to improve the relations between the community and the team and kind of, you know, bridge any gaps that may be there. Because just as you as the community deserve uh, clear answers and transparency and all of that, um, the team deserves respect for all the hard work that they put into and all the time that they dedicate to making this decentralized AI platform and ecosystem come to life and come to reality. So, you know, they don't deserve to be name called and bashed and personal attacks and put downs and all that type of stuff. So that you know, uh, always uh, won't be accepted, but um, you constructive criticism is welcome. As you can see what happened with the, um, the airdrop and even the phase two proposal, they listened right away and immediately went back into the, into the lab and came up, you know, with something based on everybody's feedback. So we're always listening to the community. And so just keep that in mind that if, even if you do have a criticism or a problem that you can present it in a respectful manner and not all this, uh, automatically just assume that somebody's trying to scam you or that, oh, this is a disingenuous effort because I think you guys made a mistake here because we're all human, even though there is highly, highly, highly intelligent people in this organization, everyone, but everybody is human and makes mistakes. So if a mistake was made, even if it was a collective of people and it didn't turn out to be the best thing, you know, have respect and have grace and know that these people do care about you and that they are here to serve you and that you guys are number one because without the community, there is no singularity net, you know? So yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so on the Reju side, uh, which is the other half of my position, uh, as I said, I have a kind of a background in the medical field. It's more, it was more of a behind the scenes role. I was not in patient care, but I'm very much familiar with medical terminology, um, disease processes, uh, the different drugs that they use to treat diseases, the surgeries that they use or that they do perform to uh, treat certain illnesses and all of that. So because of that background, I'm helping to design the Rejuve Longevity app. Um, one of the cool things that I noticed about this project was that um, they are actually welcoming of natural medicine and traditional Chinese medicine. So it's not all drug focused while uh, drug therapies and DNA therapies are a part of it. There is actually room for natural medicine, which I'm very much passionate about. Um, it's actually really cool because if you go on the rejuve.io website, you'll see if you go on underneath the business tab, you'll see that um, there's actually an anti big pharma graphic there. And I was like, yes, like when I saw that, I'm like, yep, that's all me. Uh, I, you know, I said back to my truther background and all of that. Um, because Big Pharma is all about profits. It's all about um, just focusing on symptoms and not actually curing anything and definitely not leading anybody to longevity and uh, extension of health span or anything like that. It's all about money, money, money. So uh, the purpose of Rejuve or one of the big purposes of Rejuve is to encourage people to submit their own health data into a decentralized uh, you know, protocol that they own the data and that they can submit it to 
longevity clinics and other centers that are focused on uh, advanced research to actually cure or solve the problem of aging and just further along that whole entire goal rather than just, okay, you have this symptom or you have this problem, let's try to make you feel like you don't have it anymore, even though you're going to have it for the rest of your life while it's transitioning to, let's actually get to the root of this, not only cure it, but make it almost impossible or, you know, at least to an extent of you don't experience anything to do with this, that we've deleted it from either your genetic code or just your overall experience. So it's a lot different from, you know, just traditional pop a pill when you're sick type of protocol. So I really like the Rejuve project because of that. And like I said, because of supplements and natural things are included um, and not just pharmaceutical drugs, <laughs> uh, because there's a lot of validity and real science being done there that gets overshadowed and, you know, kind of put away just because people tend to not trust it. And the reason why they don't trust it is because it's not published and publicized because it's not profitable for pharma. And that's pretty much it. And the other aspect, like I said, is the, I call it real science, where they're actually taking real user data, analyzing it with advanced AI and coming up with solutions. And it's like a back and forth thing between uh, a user of Rejuve where you're inputting your data and then the clinicians and scientists on the other side that are analyzing that data and they're doing it direct and it's due through the Rejuve token or Rejuve uh, point system, eventually to be a token. And so it's not about, you know, just straight up dollars and cents. So that is uh, much different from uh, science paid for and funded by Monsanto, where they basically hire their own scientists to, you know, I mean, it's all just a monopoly and everything like that. So I really like that whole decentralized healthcare aspect. And then there's also uh, awakening health and all of that. So this is really exciting project to be a part of, and I'm very honored and happy to be on that side as well. So yeah, so I'm like super excited to finally be an official member of Singularity Net. And as I said, you can always feel free to uh, reach out and share any questions, comments, concerns, always in a respectful manner. Always, that's like one of our hallmark rules, you know, to just be very uh, respectful, cordial, mature, pretty much. Um, also, another recent um, issue that's been going on is scams. Uh, being that we're about to, well, depending on the time of this video, go into the airdrop. So um, I wrote an anti-scam guide, which basically has all of the official links, you know, all our social media pages, all the uh, Telegram pages that have to do with Singularity Net and Singularity DAO. So, and it also has all of the admin tags, so you can click on them and directly link to their Telegram account, so you know that if somebody, because they impersonate the admins and the team members, so they can put a picture of my face, and I'm sure you all have seen it, um, put my username, copy my bio, and everything like that, and maybe switch a couple of um, I's for lowercase L's or whatever they do, and message you and ask you to connect your wallet to some dodgy link or something like that. And if you ever get one of those, that's a scam. You know, Singularity Net will never ask you to connect your wallet in a DM or do anything weird. Everything's always done in a very professional manner. Like all the announcements will be laid out and there'll be a certain protocol for things. You're not going to have an admin just randomly DM you. Oh, hi, are, are, have you solved that problem that you posted about? Oh, well, here's what I need you to do. Just send your wallet to this one and connect with me and send me something. No, and they will never ask you to send them tokens. Um, no Singularity Net team member or admin will ever ask you to send them AGI or any other token. That's a complete scam, complete bogus. Um, so yeah, just read the anti-scam guide and be very careful during these times because there's going to be even more of them out there as we rise in popularity and all of that. And... Yeah, so that's pretty much me and I'm looking forward to meeting every all the new people that come in and all those ones that were here the rest of the time to continue and to interact with you. And yeah, stay tuned for more updates about Reju and our other spin-off projects.